All right, so this is going to be a really quick video. I want to explain why I really like test driven development and why I like doing testing along the way on all my applications if possible. Now I will say most of my side projects I don't do testing on, but for anything professional, I try to make sure everything is well tested with unit tests, integration tests, and intent tests. And I want to give you an example of this is actually something that I had to solve at work. So this is a real life problem I'm going to talk about, but obviously I changed it up a little bit so I kind of explain it at an easier level. But the business requirement I had to solve was basically I have a table and every entry has people. And for every entry in this table, I need to sort them based on priority. So a three would be going to the very top, followed by a two, a one, and a zero. But the interesting thing about this is that um, every person can either be a leader or a follower, right? So in this case, Bob has a lead that points to himself. So he is actually the leader. So anytime that you have a, like a lead and a follower, they have to be grouped together regardless of the priority that they're in. Um, and then there's also the, there's also an edge case where if Bob is not even in this list, then you don't need to group these two together. But then also you have to sort them by name. So if they're all grouped together, so if Zach, Tina, and Bob are grouped together, then they need to be ordered by name after the lead. So Bob would come first, followed by Tina and then Zach. If this guy's name was not Bob and instead this was Zach and this was Bob, then Zach would come first and then you'd have Bob and then you have Tina. So it's so the business requirements are not really straightforward. And if you were to try to do this by yourself without having tests help you along the way, you would probably waste a lot of time unless you're like super talented and smart and can figure this stuff out first. But I'm not, so I like to have tests. So let me show you what happens. If I actually sort this now, you'll see that Bob comes first and you followed by Tina, Zach, and James comes after Zach because he's not part of the group, followed by Susie, Cody, and Rick. So this is the proper ordering. And let me kind of show you the edge case. If I remove Bob completely, then these things, these three right here should be sorted in a different order. So let's go find Bob and let's just remove him like so. And I want to point out like, I haven't fully solved it um, in this little example that I'm showing you. And the reason I haven't is because this is actually kind of complicated to get right. You have to sort this by Tina, or sorry, by James, Tina, and then Zach at this point. So it kind of works. They're grouped by priority, but they're not, um, there's an issue with the grouping. Like these things need to be broken up. They should not be grouped together anymore. And it should be uh, ordered by James, Tina, and Zach. So anyway, if I add back Bob, you know, it looks like it's working correctly, but honestly, this is still broken because there's test cases that I did not write. So with that being said, let me show you my test suite um, and kind of walk you through how it works. So basically I wrote a just test that calls a sort records function and I pass it a collection of all of these names. And once I've sorted these, I expect the order to be in the expected order down here, right? So if I were to run this test, um, like so, just copy the path, mpx jest, and run this, you'll see that this actually passes, right? This, this test is saying that, hey, you're sorting this in the proper way, the way that you expect it to. And the cool thing about having tests first is that you can actually write the test. And then I actually came back through when I started adding this code, right? So before I even started coding anything, this was a blink function. And I started writing out the test using test driven development. And then once I felt like I had a confident test, I actually started adding in this work. Now at this point, like I showed you, like if I were to make another test um, where Bob was actually missing, so I'll just go ahead and delete Bob here. So this whole, this whole group does not have a leader anymore. Um, the business requirements expects this thing to be sorted with James, Tina, and Zach. But as I mentioned, and as I demoed, like, if I were to run this test, the first one's gonna pass because we already saw that it works fine. But the second test that I just added is more than likely going to fail because it's expecting James to come first, but we're getting back Tina. So even though you, know, you look at this implementation, you think it's good, you look at it and you test it once in your UI and you're like, oh yeah, I solved this problem. You actually didn't solve it because there's actually more edge cases that you did not account for. So what you need to do is you have to keep on writing more tests and then keep on implementing a new piece of functionality to make that test pass, right? So now I'm at the point where I have to go and figure out well, how do I address for when there is no leak in this array? Let me walk you through the logic real quick and maybe we can fix this second test I added. So if one priority is less than the other, I'm going to go ahead and return a one and that'll make the threes go to the top and the zeros go to the bottom. 
and then I kind of do the opposite. If A is greater than uh, B, then I do the sort with a negative, which will make the threes go uh, up. Same, same idea. So I basically check the priorities and then I return them. But if the priorities are the same, right, so they're both in the group of three, I have to start checking some more complex logic. So if none of them have a leader, then I basically just sort by name. If one has a leader and one doesn't, then I kind of pull the one with the leader up to the top, um, vice versa. But then if neither of them have leaders, uh, then I sort by name. But there's an issue here because just because you have a leader doesn't mean that the leader exists in the group. So what I actually need to do here, I think, is say if um, records dot includes, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to say records dot find, and then I'll say record record dot ID is equal to B dot lead. All right, so this case is if B has a lead ID and that lead ID exists in the group of entries, then I can sort in that order. So let's just try adding this. I don't know if this is actually going to fix the issue. I'm kind of doing this live right now, but I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to check A, and that's like the only time that you actually want to sort in that particular order. So after you've changed your implementation, you can run your test and see if it works. And I think I have a hunch of how to fix it, but honestly, this probably won't fix it and it actually passes. So I actually have more confidence in my code that I just fixed the issue. So if I go back to my UI, notice that if I were to remove Bob here, let's go back to our code um, and let's just comment out Bob. It should say James, Tina, and Zach. So now I know that the ordering is good. And if I added another person in between T and Z, so like Xavier or something, um, uh, Zav, I'll just say Zav, and that's a priority three, ID of 33. Now Zav should come between Tina and Zach, and I'm pretty confident now that I actually sorted this correctly. So all that being said, this is why I really like test-driven development for some particular cases. Now using TDD for all your coding is actually a lot easier said than done, and that's why a lot of people avoid it and it can kind of cause a lot of overhead. But when you have a business requirement that's as complex as this, there's no way you're going to figure this out by hand. And then I mean, I mean, like you can if you're if you're pretty smart, but it really helps you having these tests that just keep on telling you, hey, this doesn't work. And then later on, like if a year down the road, someone needs to come and modify this code. If you don't have tests covering this code, someone's going to be very, very scared to change this because this could be sorting functionality that's used on like 15 different pages. And if you don't have some type of coverage verifying the sort order, you're going to be very, very hesitant to, like, you're going to be scared. Honestly, you're going to be scared to even want to touch this code because you're going to break stuff in production on 15 different pages, potentially. And you're going to have to write tests before you even touch it. So test-driven development will help you write the tests to make sure that your code has a higher quality. And it really speeds you up in the long term because now you actually have a bunch of test suites covering your code, verifying things, do the things that you need to do. So that's why I always like doing testing. Um, sometimes it gets in the way, but honestly, I have been saved more often than not with complex logic like this. And this is just a tip of the iceberg because I kind of dumbed this down for this little video. But this is a lot simpler than what I needed to do on my job because the records I have aren't simple. James 3 lead and like there's there's different stuff that's a lot more complex. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you all. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to join my Discord to ask me questions directly, feel free to. Also, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And have a good day and happy coding.